Hey, welcome back to Networks and Complexity. And welcome to these exercises on the minimum spanning tree. So in these exercises, we are going to do the minimum spanning tree in three different ways to make it more interesting. Now, if you haven't watched the lecture on this yet, check it out. The link is in the description. But let's get started with exercise one. This exercise asks us to construct the minimum spanning tree between four cities. Cities are called A, B, C, and D now, and the distance is again given by a distance matrix D. Okay, this is almost the same as a lecture. I'm kind of assuming here that A is the first row in column, B is the second, and so on. The ordering is not explicitly given, but I guess in this case that is pretty intuitive. So, your task now is to find the minimum spanning tree. So you want to construct a network where all the cities are on the same component, while the combined length of the links that you use is minimal. This is your chance to do it yourself. Just pause the video and see if you can find the answer. Okay, welcome back. So did you manage? Well, in any case, let's do it together. So in the lecture, we had this nice map where we could draw the individual links. Here, I don't know where the cities are with respect to each other, so I will just draw an abstract map. If you draw an abstract map, it's pretty easy to make a mess on your page. This won't happen with just four cities, but if you have more than four, it can become very confusing. To reduce the chance of making a mess, a good trick is to put your nodes in a circle. Yeah, in that way, you probably can draw the links without getting too confusing patterns there. So I will do this. I will draw uh, a circle, and I won't draw actually the circle. I will put the nodes in a circle. So I will put city A here, I put city B here, I will put city C here, and I will put city D here. So now that we have done this, we can start looking at the individual links. The shortest link, that's where we want to start, right, is this one here, nine kilometers. So this is one four or four one in our matrix. Four one of one four, that means that it's a link from A to D. So that's the first one I'm considering, A to D. And should we, should we build this link or not? Well, yes, we should, because here we had four components, and now we have only three components. So this one reduces the number of components. So yes, we want this one. And you see, I'm, I'm making this list here of the links that I consider. This creates a record of how you proceeded rather than just having the result we get at the end. And this is good because it helps you to find errors. If you, if you make errors, you can more easily spot where you went wrong. And also, if you hand this in for your lecturer or something, it gives your lecturer a chance to spot exactly where you went wrong and give more valuable feedback this way. So this is another good trick. Create a record of what you actually did. And then the third good trick I have for you, mark which ones you have already considered because that makes it easier to find the next shortest link. Okay, let's go there. Next shortest link, we have a 23, 18, 17, and a 13 here, and a 27. So the next shortest one is the 13. That is between four and two. Four and two, that would be a B and a D. So that's the next we consider, B and D. B and D, this 13, do we want to build this? Yes, because it reduces the number of components to two. Okay, yes, build. So 13, 13 done. What is the next shortest link? We have 17, 18, 23, 27. Let's do the 17, right? That's the lowest number. So 17, that's from one to two. So a link A, B. Should we build this link from A to B? And the answer is no, because this one would not reduce the number of components. So A, B, we reject. So I just cross out the 17 here, maybe. What is the next shortest one? Next shortest one is the 18 here, right? So 18, and that is between two and three, so a B to C link. B to C, do we want this? Oh yeah, B to C, we want. B to C, we want. Link build. And now everything is one component. Great. So we have found the minimum spanning tree. We've connected everything in the component, 
And we know that we have used the least length of links because every, uh, every one component network between four nodes needs three links at least. And we have used the three shortest links that we could find except for one link, the link AB, for which we know that it cannot be part of any optimal network. Okay, on to exercise two. So exercise two is the same thing again, just in a bigger example. And before you have stopped the video, actually let me say somebody here was extremely nice to you. Do you see why? If you look at this distance matrix, we have six nodes now. We have distances between six nodes given. We will just call these nodes one to six, right? But somebody was extremely nice because if you look at this distance matrix, there's one link of length one, there's one link of length two, there's one link of length three or so. So this makes it easier for you to spot the next shortest link in this big matrix. So if you want to give it a try yourself, now is your chance. Did you manage? Did you find the answer? Well, I hope you did. But let's do it together. And to make it more interesting, I said we would do it in slightly different ways. So in this case, this means I want to do it now without drawing the map. So why is that? Well, if you draw the map, eventually, if there are more nodes, right, eventually it will make a mess. And also, you always have this task of visually making sense of what is in a component and what is not. So, and if you have really many nodes, not just six or so, but I mean really many, then this becomes very, very tedious. So can we do this without drawing a map? The answer is yes. If you have some other way of keeping track in what component which node is, then we can do this without drawing a map. So instead of the map, I will now make a table. So let's make a table where I have the nodes here, node one, node two, node three, node four, node five, node six, and in this table, I'm going to put the name of the component the node is in. So um, at the moment, right, we haven't placed any links yet. So this is an empty graph. Each node is its own little component. So let's say uh, this is component one, this is in components two, three, four, five, six. So if you six components that contain the node of the same number. And now, I can do my algorithm like I did before, but instead of having a map, I will just update this table as I go. So that means the links that I consider and whether I place them or not should still be in the same order like you did if you drew it when you did the exercise yourself. So, okay, we start with the shortest link and the shortest link is this link of links one here, right? That goes from node one to node three. So the first we consider is node one to node three. And now we ask ourselves, should we place this link or not? We can check in our table and our table tells us, well, node one is in component one, node three is in component three. So if I place this link, I'm connecting two different components. So yes, I want to place this link. I mark this here, I place this link. So, and now that I'm placing this link, these two nodes are now in the same component. So this is no longer component three, it's in the same component as one, and that would be component one. Good, first link done. What's the second link? Well, that's the link of length two, right? Link of length two here from six to three. Six, three, that's our second link that we consider. Should we place this? Well, we can check in our table, three and six, and yeah, that looks good. Three is in component one, six is in component six. So we should place this, right? Let me also mark it here. The two we place, the two we place. So, and now I can go to one of these two components, either the component one or the component six and replace all of the nodes in this component and place it in the respectively other component. So I could replace these two ones by sixes here or I could replace this six here by a one, and the later is easier, so I just replace the six here by a one. Okay, good, that is the second link done. Let's look at the third link, that's a link of length three. 
should we place this link or not? This link goes from node 5 to node 3. 3 to 5. Here, 3 to 5, maybe? 3 to 5. Yeah, these are in different components, so we should link them. Now, I could replace all the 1s by 5s, or I could replace all the 5s by 1s, and the later is the easier thing. So I replace all the 5s by 1s. Okay, and now the mark here, we have placed the 3. Here and here. Okay, which is the next shortest link? It's a 4. So let's consider this 4. This goes from node 1 to node 5. 1 to 5. Check in my table, 1 and 5 on the same component. So this is one we want to reject. Here also, reject, reject. Okay, that was the wrong one. It was a, five, a 4 I should have done, right? I should have done this 5 now. But I think I might be right here. The 5 here is the next shortest link. It's from 1 to 6. From 1 to 6, they are on the same component. So 1, 6, reject. Fortunately, I've already crossed it out. Good. Another rejected link. So what's the next one? Now, um, the next one is the length of 6. So the 6 that goes from 5 to 6. So 5, 6 is the next link. 5, 6, but 5, 6, I can see here, already in the same component. So reject, reject, reject. Okay, what's the next one? Next one is the link of link 7. 2 to 3. Oh, 2 to 3. Yeah, these are in different components. So 2 to 3, I want to accept this link. And that means I accept here. And also means 2 and 3. I could replace all the twos by ones, or I can replace all the ones by twos. I replace all the twos by ones. Good. So that's the seven done. Let's move on to the eight. Where is the eight? The eight is here, one and two. One and two are already in the same component. It's easy to see now, isn't it? Because four is the only one that is not in that component. So one and two. No, we don't want to place this. Reject, reject, reject. What's the next one? The nine. The nine is um, two and five. Two and five. Two and five. Again, reject, reject, reject. Yeah? So, and uh, that is that one done. Then we have the 10. Where's the 10? The 10 is here. One and uh, no two and six two and six are already in the same component. Two and six reject, reject, reject. And what do we have now? We have the eleven. Eleven. Oh wait a minute. Three and four. Three and four. Different components. So that is one we want to place. So three and four. Accept. I could, I'm linking component 1 to component 4, I could replace all the 4s by 1s, or I could replace all the 1s by 4s. I do the lazy thing and replace this by 1, and now I can see all the nodes are in component 1. We have found a spanning tree, and it's a minimum spanning tree, because we have just used the cheapest links, except for the links where we know that they couldn't be part of the optimal solution. Ha, huh, nice, isn't it? This is actually a fairly efficient method, and it's also what you would do if you implemented this algorithm on a computer. Now, um, let's move on to the third one. This exercise is quite different, because now you get to make your own algorithm. So, one of the purposes of this, these lectures, right, is to show you these pretty clever solutions that other people have come up with, because it might be useful for you. But a more important purpose is to prepare you to make your own solutions. So now is a chance to practice this. So in this exercise, we are returning to the five Moravian cities. But this time, we want to start not with the empty graph, but with a fully connected network. And your challenge is to find a way to remove links from this network until only the minimum spanning tree is left. So you want to find an algorithm, and when you think you have a good algorithm, 
apply it to this example and see if you get the right minimum spending tree. If you want to try it for yourself, now is your chance to make your own algorithm. Pause the video now. So, did you manage? Did you find your own algorithm? Well, congratulations if you did, because making your own solutions, right, that's really the level that we want to reach here. And if you worked on this, you probably noticed the idea is pretty straightforward, but not making a mess is kind of the real challenge here. So I'm just saying this because if you found a solution that works, but is slightly messier than what I'm going to show you, well, that's also okay, right? So let me get to, to, to the solution I came up with. So, right, the basic idea I said is pretty intuitive. So we are now starting from the most expensive links and we will be checking if we can delete a link or not. So I want to delete a link if I can delete it without breaking the network into multiple components. So, and the first ones are pretty easy, aren't they? Because the first links, well, we have a fully connected graph where each node is connected to the component with four links because each node now links to four other nodes. So basically, we can just delete the first three most expensive links for free without having any worry of disconnecting the uh, minimum spending tree, right, before breaking the component. So um, in the first three steps, this is going to be very easy. I find the three most expensive links. So um, Ostrava Khilava, that is the longest link here, that is 198 kilometers. So Ostrava Khilava, it's the first one I consider. So, and this link, 198, yes, most expensive one, I can remove this. Um, what is the next one? I got 151 down here. Let's say this one is already out. Now it's easier to find. 151 down here. So 151 Khilava Selin. I can safely break this. First three I can safely break, right? So that is out. So now what is the next one? I got this 137 up here. So 137 Berno Olomuc. Uh, sorry, Berno Ostrava. Olomuc is the L, right? There's two O's in here. Berno Ostrava. This link also among the top three, I can safely break. So that one is gone. So now let's look at the next one. Next one is there's only one three digit one left. That's 121. 121 from Khilava to Olomuc. So I considering JL next. JL. So how do we figure out if this is a link that would break the um, component if I deleted this? And I'm going to do this by trying to find a cycle that uses this link, right? So I'm starting with the JL here. And the JL now, um, suppose I have started Khilava, I went to Olomuc, where can I go from Olomuc? Oh, from Olomuc I can still go everywhere, right? If you look at the Olomuc columns, it still has all its links here. So I could, for instance, go to Brno. And if I look at Brno, no, I'm kind of... I'm, went up this column, now I'm in the Brno row here, and in the Brno row, oh, I can return to Khilava. And this means that now from Olomut, there are two ways to go to Khilava. One is the direct link, and one is via Brno. And this makes a little cycle from Khilava to Khilava, right? You can go around in circles there. And because that is the case, I can break this link. So I break this link, Khilava, Olomut here. So the Khilava Olomuc 121, this is gone as well now. And now we continue like this. So what's the next cheapest one? So I'm done with the three digit ones. So the next ones are the ones that are in the 70s. And the biggest one in the 70s, as far as I can see, is the 77. So Berno Khilava. That's the first one we consider. So Berno Khilava is this part of a cycle. So let's see, if I started in Brno, 
and I went to Khilava. Where can I go from Khilava? And now, so basically, I came from Brno, now I'm the row for Khilava. And if I look at this, yeah, there's no other place I can go, right? This is uh, takes me back to Khilava. I stay in the same place. We don't want this. This was the link I used from Brno. There's no other link from Khilava. So Khilava is now a dead end. If I disconnected this, wouldn't work, right? We would break the component. So this is one we need to keep. So Erno, Chilava, the 77, I keep. So now, next cheapest one. And the 70s are easy here, right? Because they always go one down. So the next one is the 76. 76. Celine to Ostrava. Celine, Ostrava. Suppose I walked from Celine to Ostrava. Could I go in a cycle? Well, from Ostrava... The only other place I can reach here is, is so in the Ostrava column, the only other place in Celine that I can reach is um, Olomouc. And now I'm in the Olomouc row, but in the Olomouc row, I can go back to Celine. So that is a cycle. So I can break this 76 kilometer link. So Celine, um, Ostrava. break yeah good now i'm done with the 76 next one is the 75 75 is ostrava olomuc so if i went from um ostrava or let's say if i went from olomuc to ostrava this is probably easier because i can already see from olomuc to ostrava here i came from olomuc i go to ostrava i could now look at the ostrava column but in the Ostrava column, I see that the only link here that remains is to Olomouc. So this is again a dead end. If I brought breaks this, I would disconnect this. So um, Olomouc, Ostrava, Z1 needs to stay. So the 75 stays. So what have we got now? The 74. 74, Brno, Celine. Brno, Celine. Okay, Brno Celine is the one we're considering. And um, where can we go? If we went from uh, Brno to Celine, the only other place I can go is to Olomouc. From Celine here, went from Brno to the Celine row. I'm, I'm ending up in the Olomouc column, only choice. But from the Olomouc, I can go back to Brno. Yeah? can go back if I look at the column now there's one option to go back to Brno that's the 63 well can do that so we can break Brno Celine so the 74 um, is out so now what have we got we have the 63 here left the 63 is Brno uh, to Olomouc BL so BL, BL, if you look at this, Brno um, to Olomouc, that puts me, well, if I do this, BL, Brno to Olomouc, um, from Olomouc, I can go to Celine, and from Celine, oh, I'm, I'm no stuck, I'm in a dead end, I can't go anywhere, so I keep Brno Olomouc. So this one we keep. And now I have a 51 kilometer left. And the 50 kilo one, uh, 51 kilometer, that's the cheapest link. You can almost guess that we keep this, right? But the 51 kilometer, let's do it this way. Celine Olomouc. Celine to Olomouc. Yeah, if I, if I go there, where can I go? Uh, uh, Celine to Olomouc. From Olomouc, I could go into one of these two directions. I can go to Brno, but from Brno, then I can only go to Hilava. From Hilava is a dead end. The other thing is I go to P Celine to Olomouc, Celine to Olomouc, and if I don't want to go to Brno, then I can go to Ostrava. 
but from Ostrava, can I go back to Brno? No, I can't because Ostrava is also a dead end. So yes, the last link, this one, um, Celine Olomouc, we also need to keep. So we keep this one, the 51. And this were all the links, so we are done now. So we have the minimum spanning tree. That's a different way of doing this. And um, yeah, you can also do it like this. Is this as efficient as doing it the other way around? Normally it isn't if you can build every link. But if you have a network where some links you cannot build in principle, so your set of links is already constrained, going this way around might be more efficient. Okay, these were my three little exercises. See you in the next one.